Hey everybody, Mikey Chen here. Of course, today is September 11th, and this is the 13th anniversary of arguably America's darkest day. Heartbroken New Yorkers descended on Lower Manhattan, marking the day where nearly 3,000 innocent lives were lost. There is, of course, like every year, a gathering near Ground Zero, but this year there are no speeches at the ceremony, only the reading of 2,983 names, which included victims of 9 11 and the 1993 World Trade Center bombings. For the first time, the annual commemoration will unfold near an operating national September 11th museum which opened its doors in May. Okay, the news doesn't get much happier. Richard Keel, who most of us know as uh, the James Bond villain Jaws, has died at the age of 74. The seven foot two actor began his villainous ways in Roger Moore's 007, The Spy Who Loved Me in 1979, and then reprised the role two years later in Moonraker. Now, Moonraker is a really old Bond film, but I saw it probably like 10 years ago, and I remembered up until the end of that movie, I hated Joss, and this dude just like wouldn't die. But of course, at the end, he finds his true love in this little petite girl in space. And then of course, he became this lovable, gentle giant. Here are some facts about Keo that you might not have known. Before he became an actor, he worked as a bouncer at a LA nightclub. He had also held jobs as a cemetery plot salesman and night school math tutor. Can you imagine the guy who's trying to sell you a cemetery plot is like a seven foot tall giant dude. I mean, you would have to buy that plot, right? Keo also had a fear of heights. In the two Bond movies, Roger Moore's stuntman had to stand in for him for some scenes. Here's something you probably didn't know. Keo turned down the role of Chewbacca in the Star Wars movies. In an interview with the Times in 2012, he said that he was offered a lot of monster parts due to his height. He said he decided not to take the role of Chewbacca because he was afraid of being typecast and because it is, quote, always so hot inside those suits. By now, everyone's probably seen the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge spreading everywhere online. But what you don't see are stories of those who actually suffer from this terrifying disease. I found this next story extremely touching. Holly and Adam met in a doctor's office in California when Holly was the nurse assigned to treat Adam for Lyme disease in 2009. As time passed, the two started dating. But Adam's illness, which turned out not to be Lyme disease at all, but ALS. After receiving the diagnosis, Adam told Holly, quote, I want my last days seeing your face, kissing your lips, sleeping by your side. I understand if you don't want this burden on you, but if you want me, I want to marry you. The couple was married in the spring of 2012 with Adam confined to a wheelchair. After just over a year of blissful marriage, Adam died in October of 2013. I mean, this is just very much a sweet, but also very sad story. And I just wanted to give you guys some more information on ALS. Currently, there is no cure for ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, which is a progressive degenerative disease that affects nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. As this disease progresses, patients may become completely paralyzed. Uh, the life expectancy of an ALS patient is about two to five years from the time of diagnosis. And I do have a link to more information about this disease disease in the description box below. So check that out. Okay, so I got a couple pieces of food news for y'all. If you haven't heard, Olive Garden on Monday launched a PR campaign. Uh, you know how they have the unlimited pasta bowls? So this time around, Olive Garden is selling a thousand passes, $100 each, in which a person who buys one can eat unlimited pasta at Olive Garden once a day for seven weeks straight. And they also get like a free soda. Anyway, of course, people bought these and are now selling them on eBay at double, sometimes triple the price. First of all, yeah, you know what? This is a good deal. I mean, think about it. If you eat at Olive Garden every day for seven weeks, I mean, you just saved a lot of money on food. That's like two bucks per meal. And Olive Garden meals are like usually 15 to 20 bucks. But then of course, the downside is you would have to eat at Olive Garden for like seven weeks straight. You know, in college, we would actually go on a road trip to go to Olive Garden, which is located in a bigger town. That's right, Olive Garden was a luxury for us back then. Also, I'm gonna teach all you poor starving college kids a trick for stretching your money a little when you eat at Olive Garden. Here's what you do. Go there, order an entree, 
and then feast on the soup, salad, and breadsticks that comes with the meal. Then you take the meal home with you. And you can take some of that leftover breadsticks and salad with you as well. All right, there you go, guys. Not proud that I did that, but if I had to drive two hours to go to Olive Garden, I had to do what I had to do. Also, Burger King in Japan has gone to the dark side with its launching of two new black burgers with black cheese. Okay, uh, I don't think they just let the burgers and cheese sit until they turned black. The bun and cheese is made from bamboo charcoal. I didn't know that was a thing that you could eat. They both come with onion and garlic sauce that is made using squid ink. Now, I personally don't get the whole appeal of eating a burger that looks like it's possessed by the devil. But hey, apparently people love this stuff. If you ever have one, let me know how it tastes. I mean, does it taste devilishly delicious? And finally, here are some photos that has gone viral around the world. Check this out. These are pictures of a loyal dog that sat and waited outside of the emergency room while its owner was undergoing surgery at a Changchun hospital. The dog's owner was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery after suddenly falling ill. His pup managed to sneak inside the emergency room during the operation, after which medical staff had to lead it out and let it wait outside. The dog would wait at the door and then seize opportunities to slip in again when staff was coming in and out of the room. Staff at the hospital said that when the dog was escorted out of the room, it glanced back at the owner a few times and then waited at the door. There's no news yet on how the owner is doing, but this does remind me of the movie Hachigo. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it with a lot of tissues. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Again, links to all the stories are in the description box below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks so much. See ya.